I know that the kids are tired of wearing a mask, but as parents and adults, we have to make good decisions for them. Just the same as not allowing them to eat a bowl of candy for breakfast. You know, a lot of the complaints that happen at the school board, my personal opinion is that I think they're more emotional decisions of adults versus the wants and needs for the children. Sometimes you do get some topics in there that are being discussed, but a lot of the anger and the fighting, a lot of times it's more political than it is about the needs of the kids. It shows a bad example for our children of how our communities and how our world should really work together for a cause. At the school board meetings, you know, the parents have the option of going to speak and a lot of times they're using their emotions or negative emotions towards the school board telling them what they're not doing and that they'll be replaced. You know, pretty embarrassing. I think what you need to keep at the forefront of your mind is the progression of our students, the progression of our communities. I think a lot of times people uh, get emotional when they feel like things are being changed from what they're used to and what's traditional. We all have some issues with some of the decisions that are being made, uh, whether for or against. But when we really think about if, it, if it's best for our children, you know, and is it going to take us to a better place than where we are, that's what we should keep in the front of our minds. Enough is enough. For the last 20 months, we've been under somebody's control regarding when we can leave our house, where we can go to eat, where we can shop, and now what we have to wear on our faces. I'm not here tonight to argue the effectiveness of masks or the vaccine, nor do I want to minimize anyone's hurt or pain caused from COVID-19. But let's be honest, the data really shows that the biggest threat to our children from COVID-19 is not their physical health, but their mental health. Regarding the CRT and equality, I think first we need to identify that they are two separate topics. People are making them synonymous. Uh, equality and CRT is not synonymous. Critical race theory is based on the notion that people who have great success did so on the backs of marginalized people, particularly the success of white people. Critical race theory teaches that because of a person's success, they are an oppressor. Therefore, grouping people by who are oppressed and who are the oppressors. That would explain why one of my daughters was told by her teacher that the only group that's not marginalized is rich white men. When they say systemic racism, social emotional learning, white privilege, intersectionality, these are all derived terms from critical race theory. So they may not be teaching the curriculum, but they are slowly ushering it in and the slow boil is intentional. CRT is a study that has gone on for a really long time. And I feel like a lot of people are giving thoughts and opinions on CRT when they haven't actually done the research. We hear a hot button topic and then we hear the buzz about it and we take the word of everything we've heard versus going in to read about it. If you know the definition of equality, why would you not want everybody to have equality? Equity, why would you not want everyone to have the same opportunities? People just want their children to have the equal opportunities. We want to be able to educate our children, give them the same resources so that they can have the same outcome in life as everybody else.